and here she comes. The woman of the moment, Ms. Meghan Markle. What a moment of history for her. May 19th will mark the first anniversary of Meghan and Harry's amazing fairy tale wedding. So we thought it would be a great time to look back at some of the highlights from Meghan's first year as a royal. And there is the kiss that everyone was hoping for and waiting for. From her royal engagements, to her first big royal overseas tour, to becoming a mom, it was so much fun to watch everything unfold. It's just been the dream. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, better known as Prince Harry and Meghan, made their first public debut as a married couple just a few hours ago. On May 21st, 2018, just three days after her Windsor wedding, Meghan enjoyed her first official engagement as the Duchess of Sussex. Meghan and Harry actually postponed their honeymoon so that they could attend Prince Charles' 70th birthday, which was thrown by the Queen at Buckingham Palace. Meghan was in this gorgeous, sheer, pink mauve dress, the matching hat from the UK designer goat, and she just looked flawless. And she seemed to be fitting in great. She was laughing with Prince Charles and Camilla. She seemed to fit right into the family. So, Pa, while I know that you've asked that today not be about you, you must forgive me if I don't listen to you, much like when I was younger. Even though this was an official royal event, there was some moments of levity. There was a really, really funny moment when Harry was playfully swatting at a bee that was buzzing around his ear. Save it in, sorry, <laughs> that bee really got me. He said it even got him, stung him, and Meghan couldn't help but, uh, but laugh as uh, she watched her new husband kind of deal with this as he's giving this really big speech on behalf of his dad. Meghan and Harry had graciously postponed their honeymoon to attend the garden party, but soon afterwards, the happy couple embarked on a two-week trip to an undisclosed location. Where will they honeymoon? Will the royal couple honeymoon in Africa? Alberta is reportedly the destination. We take them to Iceland. It's hard to believe that for the most famous couple in the world, that they managed to go on their honeymoon without anyone having any idea where they went. And even harder to believe is the fact that a year later, we still don't know where they went. So it really speaks to how much Meghan and Harry value their privacy and how good they are at keeping secrets. <laughs> We're taking good guesses, but they're never going to give it away. By June 9th, Meghan and Harry were back in London for the annual Trooping the Colour celebration. Trooping the Colour is the official celebration of the monarch's birthday. So while the Queen's birthday is actually in April, Queen Elizabeth's official celebration takes place in June. And when Prince Charles becomes the king, they will celebrate his official birthday in June. Prince William, same thing. Um, and it is a very festive day filled with pomp and circumstance. Trooping the Color also marked a milestone moment for Meghan and Harry. It um, was Meghan's very first appearance on the Buckingham Palace balcony, which is a really uh, big tradition for the royals. She brought her own special touch to it too, because she wore an off-the-shoulder dress that had just never been done before. She wore an off-the-shoulder Carolina Herrera pink dress, and typically we don't see the royals bearing their shoulders, um, but she looked elegant that day and beautiful and definitely made an impact. Prince Harry's wife Meghan joined Queen Elizabeth today for her first royal engagement without her husband. On June 14th, the Duchess made her first solo appearance with the Queen in the town of Chester, nearly 200 miles north Northwest of London. The reason for the overnight trip was to commemorate the opening of a new bridge. Meghan's first solo appearance with the Queen was a really historic moment because, first of all, it happened very early in the marriage to um, Prince Harry. Kate waited much longer for her first solo appearance with the Queen. And second of all, uh, Meghan got an extra special honor, which is the Queen invited her to join her on her private train to travel um, to Chester. So it was really remarkable. It's the Queen's train, and the only people who go on it are the Queen, Prince Philip, and Prince Charles. It's clear the Queen really wants to welcome Meghan into the family, and this was a great example of that. The queen crack a smile, but she couldn't help herself as she was sitting there bonding with Meghan, the two of them chatting like old friends, so it was really nice to see. On June 19th, Meghan and Harry celebrated their one-month wedding anniversary with another carriage ride at opening day of Royal Ascot. Royal Ascot is the highlight of the British social season. It is one of the biggest horse racing events of the year. It's also an iconic fashion event in British culture. The royal family doesn't have any official duties at the Royal Ascot. They just have to kind of show up and be royal and let everybody stare at them. 
Megan opted for a long white sleeve dress with button details on the front from Givenchy, which happens to be her wedding dress designer. This was Megan's first time at Ascot. It was her big debut for what is a truly iconic event for the royals. The following month, the royal couple began their first official trip as newlyweds, the two-day tour of Dublin. Megan pulled out all the stops, so for the first time we got to see three outfit changes in a day, which is something we've seen Princess Kate do, but this was the first time Megan did, and she did not disappoint. She started off her day at the Royal Air Force event, wearing a Dior dress that was seemingly inspired by Audrey Hepburn. Then, when she touched down in Dublin a few hours later, she was wearing a very chic pencil skirt look from Givenchy. Then she finished her day at the home of the Irish ambassador, and she wore a really glamorous Amelia Wickstead black dress with her hair curled in kind of Veronica Lake waves on one side, so it was a really Hollywood look. This tour really solidified Megan as a fashion icon. Um, every chance she got, she showed off a new design, and everyone can wait to see what she came out wearing next. The Meghan Markle effect is a real thing. The Meghan effect already in full force. I like to call the Meghan effect the Markle sparkle, if you will. Her first year as a royal, Meghan has really become a fashion icon. People know she has amazing taste, and they can't wait to see what she's going to wear next. Ever since Meghan has burst into the royal scene, we have seen what has come to be known as the Markle sparkle. And whatever she steps out wearing or carrying from purses to shoes to her clothes typically sells out. Megan knows that now that she's a royal, she has to dress a little more conservatively. But she really has her own style, and she adds a little Hollywood glamour to the looks. Megan's style is chic, it's effortless, but it also is curated in a way to match her look to the event she's attending. So for example, when Meghan and Harry landed in Fiji during their royal tour, Meghan stepped out wearing a Fijian blue dress to represent the color of the country. She also did that again in Morocco in a gorgeous red Valentino dress, which represented the color on their flag. She also tends to wear local designers that represent the cities and countries she's in. When she was in Sydney during the tour, she wore Karen G. And when she was in Wales with Harry, she wore a local Welsh-based denim company. But what we have really come to know and love from Megan is her high-end couture from Dior and Valentino and of course Givenchy and royal fans can't get enough of it. Thank you everyone so much for coming. Can you hear me all right? Yes, great. On September 20th, 2018, the Duchess celebrated her first official charity project. Together, our community cookbook, a collection of recipes to benefit West London's Hub Community Kitchen. Thank you for coming for the launch of together to celebrate this and the women of the Hub Community Kitchen. The book became an immediate bestseller, both in the UK and in America, and that's due in large part to Megan's involvement. Working on this project for the past nine months has been a tremendous labor of love. This was a big event for her, and she had some really special supporters by her side. Prince Harry and her mom, Doria, came over from LA. Megan is a known foodie. We know she loves being in the kitchen, so seeing her in her natural element, grabbing utensils, getting right in there, cooking with the women, it was really nice to see. And you can see Harry off to the side looking on. He seems really proud of everything she's doing. So please, enjoy a beautiful lunch. Another round of applause for the women of the Hub Community Kitchen. And Five days later, Meghan made her first official solo appearance when she attended the opening of the Oceana exhibit at the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Meghan arrived at the event looking like a complete movie star. A beautiful black Givenchy dress, black pumps, a small clutch. She just owned the place. And she really proved that even without Harry, she's able to take center stage. The exhibit featured traditional Maori art. And that was interesting because Meghan and Harry were getting ready to go on their first big international trip to New Zealand. A fun moment for royals throughout the decades is any celebration of Maori art and culture, um, which includes the traditional nose rubbing. So Megan got to do that for the first time during her royal life, and it was fun to watch. On October 12th, Meghan and Harry returned to St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle to attend the royal wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank. 
Eugenie is one of the Queen's eight grandchildren, alongside Prince Harry, of course, so she's Prince Harry's first cousin, and they are very close. It was on this occasion that people started really speculating that Meghan could be pregnant. Eyebrows were raised when Meghan wore this blue coat and never seemed to take it off throughout the proceedings. Meghan chose to wear a pretty boxy coat that she conspicuously never took off throughout the entire wedding. We later learned, in fact, that it was at Eugenie's wedding that Meghan and Harry shared their happy baby news with the royal family. It was still a secret to the whole world, but not for long. Four days later, the Duke and Duchess arrived in Australia for a two-week royal tour. Duchess Meghan, seen here today in Australia, clutching a binder in front of her. That same day, Kensington Palace broke the biggest baby news of the year. Exciting news from the UK. The Duchess of Sussex is pregnant. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will become a family of three. Aww. Even though she was still very early in her pregnancy, Meghan's baby bump took center stage throughout the royal tour. All eyes were kind of on royal baby to be. Meghan and Harry also received their very first baby gifts when they were in Australia. Perfectly themed, some baby Ugg boots and a little stuffed kangaroo. This was just five months after Meghan and Harry's fairy tale wedding, so we were still basking in the glow of that incredible day when we got the news that now we were going to have a new royal baby. Of course, any royal baby is cause for celebration, but this being Harry's first child is really special. So it was a lot of excitement just in five months time. was announced, Meghan Markle became the royal family's queen of style. The baby announcement was huge news, and part of that is because we were all so excited to see what Meghan's maternity style would be. How would the Markle sparkle translate to a baby bump? Meghan definitely took a different route in her maternity fashion from Kate. She largely didn't wear actual maternity clothes. She kept wearing a lot of high-end designers. Megan really wanted to look stylish throughout the pregnancy, so she picked clothes that looked good on her. This was largely a high-end designer pregnancy, so we saw Dior, Givenchy, Stella McCartney, all those designers that we know Megan loves. It was a whirlwind celebration with some of the world's biggest stars. In February 2019, Megan made big news in the U.S. when she arrived in Manhattan for her baby shower. Baby showers are definitely more of an American tradition and don't tend to happen in the UK, especially uh, among the royal family. So this was definitely something that Meghan's friends decided to take upon themselves. Meghan's baby shower was star-studded. Abigail Spencer, her former co-star on Suits, Gail King, the CBS News host, and Amal Clooney. Serena Williams ended up even Instagramming from the behind the scenes of during the shower, which was so fun to see. The shower took place in the Mark Hotel's penthouse suite, which goes for like $75,000 a night. And the food was provided by celebrity chef Jean Georges. Shortly after, Meghan was reunited with her husband as the couple embarked on a three day tour of Morocco. They were there, Meghan and Harry, at the request of the Queen to advance women's education and girls' education in Morocco. And so they visited girls' schools. Um, they took a trip to the mountains. Meghan got a henna tattoo. Um, they sort of were part, you know, tourists, part ambassadors, as they are on these tours. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are moving. In the spring, the Duke and Duchess relocated from Kensington Palace to the town of Windsor, 25 miles west of London. So they were doing a pretty big upheaval. Um, when they lived at Kensington Palace, of course, they had been neighbors with Harry's brother, um, Prince William, and their sister-in-law, um, Kate Middleton. Now they were gonna be leaving all that for the country, essentially. Windsor is a very bucolic, lovely, charming English town, um, but it's most famous, of course, for Windsor Castle, which is the Queen's grand residence um, at the heart of Windsor. And they chose a cottage um, on the Windsor grounds known as Frogmore Cottage, and that's where they decided they wanted to start their family life together. This is the new Instagram page, Sussex Royal, formerly the Duke and Duchess, Harry yeah. and Meghan. On April 2nd, Meghan and Harry made a huge splash on social media when they launched their own Instagram account, at Sussex Royal. 
In just six hours, they had a million followers and have now surpassed eight million. When we saw at Sussex Royal make its debut on Instagram, we all assumed that this was being set up so that they could announce the baby themselves on their terms on Instagram. And what's interesting is we sort of see little influences of Megan's sprinkled throughout. You'll see American spellings. You'll see the word fall instead of autumn. Um, you'll see emojis, which we hadn't really seen from the royals previously. So definitely a lot of Megan's influence on Instagram. The royal baby is here. The first baby, a boy, for Harry and Meghan. On May 6, 2019, nearly one year after their wedding, Meghan and Harry welcomed their first child, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. Just as we suspected, Meghan and Harry decided to turn to their own Instagram account to announce the birth of their baby boy. The very same day, Harry came out and gave a surprise press conference on the grounds of Windsor, right in front of the stables, to share his joy of becoming a new dad. I'm, I'm very excited to announce that uh, Megan and myself had a baby boy um, early this morning, a very healthy boy. He was so overjoyed, so blissed out. Mother and baby are doing incredibly well. Um, it's been the most amazing experience I could ever um, possibly imagine. One of the things that was so sweet was how much he gushed about Megan. How any woman does what they do is beyond comprehension. And he said, I don't know how women do it. I just don't know how women do it. I haven't been at many births. Um, <laughs> this is definitely my first birth. Uh, but it was amazing, absolutely incredible. And as I said, I'm so incredibly proud of my wife. It was so charming to hear him speak like that. As every father and parent would ever say, you know, your, your baby is absolutely amazing, but this little thing is, is, is absolutely to die for. So I'm just over the moon. Thank you very much, guys. It is time to take our first look at Prince Harry and Meghan's newborn son. Just two days later, Meghan and Harry stepped out in St. George's Hall in Windsor Castle to debut their baby boy to the world. He has the sweetest temperament. He's really calm and... Um... Uh, he gets that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's, been, he's just been the dream, so it's been a special couple days. It was such a special moment to see this family of three for the first time. Um, you know, they were really natural, very very relaxed in the way that they sort of kept stroking baby Archie, kept looking at each other really lovingly. You could see the joy between the three of them. We're just so thrilled to have, have our own little bundle of joy um, and be able to spend some precious time with him as he slowly, slowly starts to grow up. <laughs> and yet they were in this very regal setting, so it was really kind of remarkable to see this American mom um, giving birth to uh, seventh in line to the throne of England um, in, a, in a majestic setting. And we just bumped into the Duke as we were walking by, which was so nice, so um, it'll be a nice moment to introduce the baby to more family, and my mom's with us as well, so it's, uh, it's been a really, here we go. <laughs> another, another great grandchild. Yes. <laughs> and yet, she was also a new mom, you know, glowing, um, you know, sort of still probably completely exhausted, um, but really proud to not only share her baby with the world, but to stand alongside her husband. It's magic. I mean, I have the two best guys in the world, so I'm really happy. And I thought that was a very tender and, and real moment. She's already got a little bit of facial hair as well. <laughs> Wonderful. And thank you everybody for all the well wishes and the kindness. Mm -hmm. It's it really just means so much. Thanks, Later that day, Meghan and Harry introduced their baby son to the Queen for the first time in Windsor Castle. And uh, of course at the time, no one outside of the royal family knew the baby's name yet. They did not announce the name on Instagram until they had had that meeting with the Queen because the Queen's the boss, so you share all the big news with her first. Um, so they, they, they had their big meeting and then we got the news on Instagram that the baby was named Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. 
Along with the name, we got a really remarkable photo that the Sussexes shared on Instagram. And this was a photo showing Meghan and Harry introducing baby Archie to the Queen, to Prince Philip. And also included in the photo is Meghan's mom, Doria Raglan, who we know she's very close with, who had been staying at Frogmore Cottage with the couple um, in, in leading up to the birth. But it really cannot be said enough the sort of historic nature of this photo to see a black American grandma with the Queen of England looking together over a baby that connects them through the generations. This is a really progressive thing that we would never have seen in the royal family even 30 or 40 years ago. So for me, that photo speaks volumes about how the royal family has evolved, about what a major impact Meghan has had already, and about the future that little Archie represents. <laughs> for months, royal fans have been speculating as to what the name of their baby would be. Of course, everyone was really surprised when the name Archie came out. It's not short for Archibald, it's just Archie. And it's a popular-ish name in England. Harrison very literally means son of Harry, so that was the inspiration behind that choice. Last name Mountbatten Windsor is a name that all of the descendants of the Queen carry, so that surname is something passed down um, through the Queen's generations. The birth of Archie is the perfect ending to Meghan's first year as the Duchess of Sussex. It really couldn't have been more perfect for Meghan to become a mom and welcome her first baby just 13 days ahead of her first wedding anniversary. So it's kind of hard to imagine how it could have been a more perfect ending to what was truly the biggest year imaginable for someone entering the royal family, but we can expect that she's not gonna slow down anytime soon. People who know her best say, Megan is a person who doesn't like to be idle, and I also think that we won't have to wait long before Megan is ready to become a mom for the second time, because people who know her well say that that's something that they expect she's going to want and that she will be eager to do it sooner than later and give Archie a sibling.